I ditched my Made in China mini PC for two weeks and replaced it with Raspberry Pi 500 Plus, described as no less the premium desktop computer. I did all the regular stuff on it, the web browsing, docs editing, and I even edited this video on it. I tried playing some emulated games too. Staying in one Raspberry Pi OS would be too boring, so I tried three different OSs for this little keyboard computer. I recorded a piece of this video every few days, so it has this kind of funny vlogging narration. I hope you'll enjoy it. Let's go to day one. Hey, so today is December 1st, Monday, and what better day there is to start with is daily driving Raspberry Pi 500 plus. Uh, I'm gonna skip all the unboxing stuff because by this point there's been only a few months and I think people who uh, were interested in that, they already watched the unboxing videos. This is me now and I hope it's not going to be like this meme after two weeks. I don't plan to do much in the first one or two days. I'm just going to install all the software that I need for daily driving it for two weeks and going to do some light browsing, probably what, going to watch YouTube and mainly do research on what do people think the best OS for daily driving Raspberry Pi is. And then I'm going to install that one. Okay, so I actually got the second micro HDMI to HDMI cable today, which means that I can finally start recording the screen instead of making screenshots. First of all, I couldn't get the sound output through HDMI on the first boot. The icon was just not appearing. There was no audio configuration tool in preferences. But magically, after I installed updates and rebooted the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus, it just started working. I don't know how or why, but it did. Now, as you can see, it working perfectly. I started with the board connected to Wi-Fi, but I quickly found out that because my router is actually pretty far, it's it's in the living room, so the speed was really suboptimal. So I switched to Ethernet. Now it's much better. Yeah, and then I finally started researching on what is the best OS for daily driving Raspberry Pi. People seem to be mentioning Raspberry Pi OS. I mean. Okay, fine. I have that already. I also noticed that name RBN mentioned quite a lot. Um, and I like it more than uh, regular Ubuntu because regular Ubuntu might be a bit heavy with its GNOME desktop. For the second day, I'm going to be doing a little bit more light browsing and I'm going to try and install VS Code because this is what I use for coding. All right, so it's uh, day four now and I decided that the next operating system I'm going to try on Raspberry Pi 500 Plus is going to be Armbian, specifically the Ubuntu-based Armbian version. And I could boot that from SD card or even a flash drive, but uh, to give it a fair comparison, I would like to actually have all of the OSs on the same SSD. I'll be looking for a tool that should be helpful in making that work. And I think the pin is supposed to do exactly what is required. I'm going to flash the pin files directly from the Pi 500 Plus and then boots into that. What are you using Raspberry Pi 500 or 400 for? Let me know in the comments below. These things are neat. So that's day five and six of my Raspberry Pi 500 Plus experiment. And the reason I'm putting two days together is because on Friday I worked a bit late than usual. I didn't have much time to do anything with the Pi, except I tried to install Streamia for watching some Japanese cartoons. Yeah, so first of all, uh, there is no ARM64 binary available for Streamia, not on the flat pack, not with apt-get. This is why I had to compile it from source, which went actually quite okay. Unfortunately, I quickly discovered that um, I cannot play 1080p videos. Uh, on it, it would immediately start dropping frames and lagging. But the next day, I had a bit more time on Saturday, and on Saturday, I actually, um, you know, lurked around and I saw that Pi 5 should be definitely able to handle 1080p video at the very least. So, what I did is that I downloaded the VLC and configured it as according to this Reddit post. I mean, magically enough, it just worked and um, no issues whatsoever using VLC uh, with 720 and 1080p videos. But it still would not work for 
uh, 4K videos. And another thing that I was trying to do on Saturday was playing some games on Steam or outside of that. You already saw that I played Open Morrowind and um, that was barely playable, I would say. With the potato settings, it's about 30 FPS outside. So that is playable, but not optimal. And I wanted to try a bit more games with Fax Ammo and Box 64. Fax Ammo was uh, worse, actually, in performance. The games that I could launch there in Steam were just a slideshow. And then Box 64 installed with the Pi apps. According to the reports of the people, it's supposed to be even able to handle the source games like Half-Life 2 and Portal. That was not the case with me. I, it, they, they would work, but it would be a slideshow again. Half-Life 1, on the other hand, worked quite well. No issues there whatsoever. After I switched it to Proton, not the default Linux runtime. And I'm currently trying the Fallout, the first Fallout, because on my phone, I was actually playing that. But it seems to me that with the Box 64, it's, yeah, it's just not working. It's um, basically just crashes. And it worked is fax ammo, but it was also pretty slow. I think mean, I just didn't even understand why that would be so slow, because this is a very old game. It's not even 3D. No, oh, actually, I was wrong. It does work uh, if you use the legacy mode and um, so bad. Yeah, it's definitely playable. The resolution is very, very, very bad. So overall, the whole game experience was actually pretty lackluster on Pi 500 plus. I mean, yeah, okay, I get it. I wasn't expecting to see any of the A A A A A plus um, level titles working on it. Uh, my expectation was kind of to play some older games, like think beginning of 2000s, maybe end of 90s, Fallout. You know, as I said, I play Fallout on the phone, works really well, but uh, it was really hit and miss. Definitely took some trial and error to even make some of the games work. In general, for day-to-day -day stuff, I quite enjoyed Armbian in more than PyOS. It has this modern interface, you know, how modern Linux is supposed to look like. The interface itself is not laggy. It's quite smooth. You have the, you have the proper settings menu, Again, if you use Ubuntu as a base, you have all the PPAs, which help you to do work. And it's Sunday today. What better day there is to do some unfinished stuff from work and spend the day coding. Hmm. Today I tried out the VS Code already pre-installed in Armbian and it worked as you would expect it to work. Everything was smooth and usable. I cannot show you my work stuff here directly on the channel. But, for example, this should give you an idea how it works. No glitches whatsoever. Pretty nice. Uh, but then, you know, maybe again it's my inflated expectations. I wanted to also use some AI when coding. At least my thinking was that I could use some uh, auto-completion model, like Quen. 2.5, the smallest one, and it kind of worked. I went back and forth a little bit. I tried installing the llama.cpp VS Code plugin, but it was kind of rough on the edges. And then I found the plugin called Complete, which actually turned out to be really nice and uh, very similar to what uh, the default GitHub Copilot experience offers in VS Code. I used the Quen 1.5 billion for chat and other functions. And uh, 0 0.5 for autocomplete. Autocomplete, I, as you can see, it worked, but each time I had to kind of type a bit and wait for the suggestion. The pace was a bit too slow to my liking. As you can see, it uses all four core CPU completely, and this is running with Olama, so pretty much wrapper around Lama.cpp. And then for the agent mode, it actually did its job quite fine. This calculator code, works well. The planning and uh, edit and agent mode actually did not work as they were supposed to, but the chat worked and it could also apply the code from there. But it was just way too slow, even with 1.5 billion model. Again, I'll do a bit of optimization, but to me it seems that now if you want to use some AI coding tools on Pi 500s, you will 
need to use some cloud providers for that. And yeah, that was actually most of today on Sunday and uh, in the evening I am prepared to watch a copyright free movie on Streamia. Obviously using Streamia, enjoy your copyright free movies responsibly. And yeah, I already checked everything with the VLC media player. Um, as I showed you last time, the movie I wanna watch plays perfectly. Okay, now it's pretty late on day um, 8, 9, 10, 10, which is Thursday of my little Raspberry Pi 500 plus daily driving experiment. And uh, you might say, hey, what happened on day 7, 8 and 9? Well, I decided that the next OS I am trying uh, is going to be Fide OS. And uh, it seemed like really interesting choice because I was eager to try both the Fide OS itself and also the Android and Linux subsystems available. But it was up to a rough start. I couldn't get it to work originally at all. I think it said that there was an error with the package, but in fact, I think there was something about the SD card. I tried writing an image to SD card with different tools using Balenia Etcher and uh, Raspberry Pi Imager. None of them worked. In the end, what I had to do is I flashed the Fide OS onto NVMe from Raspberry Pi OS on SD card. This way it worked and put it up fine. No issues whatsoever. So just keep that in mind. And it seems that not only me encountered that error. And from there, it was mostly smooth sailing. I really like so far the, the desktop experience overall. It, it looks like a modern OS. The animations are just a little bit laggy, but it doesn't really affect the experience at all. Their menus with the settings and the interface looks nice and what you would expect the interface to look like in 2025. There are supposedly even those Fide OS AI features, which I don't need really. I tried both Android subsystem and Linux subsystem. These parts do not work that well. Android, yeah, I tried installing Play Store and that kind of worked, but you are not able to run any of the complicated system intensive uh, apps. I tried Streamia, very laggy, not usable really. As if you compare it to my experience on Armbian, I wouldn't use that. And then I tried Angry Birds, which is supposedly really old game and, you know, 2D and everything. Barely playable, laggy. So, yeah, I would expect the other apps to have similar experience. Maybe you can run something like Keep, but like Google Keep, but does it really make sense? You can just run it in a browser. Let me know your comments here. You would, if you do use Fide OS, especially in the Raspberry Pi, do you think it's Android subsystem is useful at all or not? And then for Linux subsystem, most of the things, at least the regular things, work quite normal. Uh, I was able to run VS Code, but for example, the Steam installation, I followed the instructions that were on Fide OS wiki. And yeah, Steam can work through Box 8664. But really, it's uh, at least the Half-Life was unplayable. I'm yet to try any other games. I am expecting kind of similar results. So um, yeah, as I said, it's Thursday. I will um, keep using Fide OS for a couple of days. And then finally, I need to decide which OS and which software I'm going to use to edit this video. Hey guys, what's up? Um, it's an early morning of the day 13th, so Sunday, and I'm still having my morning coffee here. So what was happening in the last few days? Basically, I continued with Fido OS, and I did some more of the regular daily usage stuff, like using browser, listening to the music, that all worked well, and I really enjoyed the modernness of the OS. So that's on the bright side. But at the same time, I also tried, um, you know, digging into why Steam games were so slow, and I found out that there is no GPU acceleration for Linux subsystem of Fide OS. And it's because it was disabled a few versions ago in Chromium OS. You can enable it, but then Steam doesn't work at all. And, and in general, the OS, at least on Raspberry Pi, it feels a bit raw and unpolished. I'm saying that because more than a few times it happened that it restarted on itself. Even when I was trying to do some 
really simple things like changing resolution on the second screen. So that really added friction to my daily usage of the OS. So what I decided to do is that yesterday I um, used the Google Docs to edit the script for the beginning and end of the video. And I also created the thumbnails for the video in uh, Canva that all worked really well. It's all browser-based work. That's just no issues whatsoever. And today I'm going to install RMB on NVMe so that use shortcut video editor or any other one that will work for my needs to edit the video and publish it. And for the OS recap, because I tried three OSs and I felt that Raspberry Pi OS, it works, but it's just too simplistic for daily usage. Then Fide OS, it's on the opposite end of the spectrum. It has a lot of features, really nice modern graphical interface, but it's just really not polished. The small bugs and issues, they add daily friction, which is not something you want in the operating system you use every day. And RMBN ended up being my favorite. So it has a modern interface, better than Raspberry Pi OS, but at the same time, it actually stable and has the features that I need. For example, GPU acceleration. So what's the verdict? I think both Raspberry Pi 500 and 500 Plus have very clear niche. They can work as desktop PC replacements for people who don't need high performance, like students, kids, elderly, and or into Linux and ARM systems. If you or someone you're buying it for falls into one of these groups and you've got around $100 to spare, then 500 plus is the one to get. The built-in SSD and much nicer keyboard make a real difference long-term. Install ARMBN and you're good to go. Maybe keep an SD card with Raspberry Pi OS for compatibility reasons, just in case. And honestly, have fun with it.